Have a round racked? Yes, good. This is definitely how you want to play as a new player. As much noise as humanly possible. Let's jog away. See, the exhaustion, the tiredness, means we basically can't win any fights with melee. That's the problem, is this, I believe the first level of tired reduces your melee damage by something ridiculous like 60% or something like that. So you really, really can't be playing around with this stuff. Put on our nightstick. That guy has a backpack. I pity the fool. Oh, we're getting ourselves in trouble here because we're fighting for something we think is worth it. Get off me. And the other horde found us. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. See if the horde actually found us. Nope. That large backpack is going to be the savior for us. This is why. Watch this. Where is it? Large backpack. Equip on back. Leather gloves. We're going to wear those. Military boots. We're going to wear those. We have just found three things that we need on our list of survival tools. Chicken in the backpack. Cigarettes all the way down to map in the backpack antidepressants let's make sure we're looking around seed packet sheets in the backpack look how our weight goes down shoes bloody drop those we don't need those shells sleeping tablets thread sure all in the backpack don't put your water bottle in the backpack you won't drink it if you do we need the metal bar in the backpack just to reduce its weight there we go now we're talking okay let's remove this broken glass a filthy thing. Climb in this house. See if we can't turn it into a... Are these zombies? Let's check. Nope. No lights. What the? A key? Okay. Well, that's good. Now we're exhausted, so we need to see if we need... Oh, baseball bat. That's ah, basically broken. Not even worth it. But another metal pipe in the backpack. Now we've got quite a few weapons that we can hang on to. This is good. This is a good little house. Let's eat a banana. Who doesn't like a banana before? But Wait a second! Sir, I was eating a banana. It's so rude. I like honestly that how did he how did he fake it? Wait a second. What the I swear I tried to hit him earlier. But that's okay. I, I guess they're both faking, so I don't trust either one of them now. I don't trust either one of you now. Turn on the TV. To life and living. Check the books. No good books here. We're still in pain, but we're very tired. I believe when you're very tired, you can go to sleep, but I don't trust that zombie over there. So here's what we're going to test. See, we can grab that corpse. Can we grab the other corpse? Nope. Wait. Yes, we can. Okay. Let's go dump this outside somewhere. Okay, now we can trust it. If you can move it, you can trust it. Oh, my alarm went off. That means we need to be near the clock. Stop alarm. Set alarm. Turn it off. Okay. Make sure we're here for the class. See if we still have that foraging book. We'll read it. Actually, let's remove this bandage and... Rip sheets it so I don't bleed to death. There we go. This is an advertisement, so I will run in here to see if there's any, you know, good medical stuff in the bathroom. If not, I'll close it and I'll come back here for this class. Why do I have canned food? Where did I get that? I don't know. I'm going to eat half this chicken while I'm listening because I hate just sitting here doing nothing. That's always the worst. And then I will read see what skill we get. This exposure survival usually gives us one of these three, but it'll sometimes give you farming 
as well, the 6 p.m. class. And make sure you guys let me know in the comments if you like these long-form playthroughs where you get to hear my every laugh, my every mistake, or if you like it better when I do the quick cuts. I know a lot of people watch the quick cut videos and think, yep, see, we're getting farming, and think I'm maybe playing multiple clips edited together or something. No, I just cut out the empty space in between. Generally speaking, when I'm trying to teach about a game that I know a lot about, like this one, I try to talk a little more, so I'll get a lot more or a lot less dead space in between. But sometimes when I'm playing a game, you know, I'll be talking hardly at all because I'm still trying to figure it out myself. All right, he says until next time, guys. Frankly, now that we have a hammer but not a saw, there are some things we can disassemble, but not many. You always have to check. There we go, lightwood desk. This is worth disassembling to me. It'll make noise, so it might lure a zombie in. But if we get a plank here and we find some nails laying around, we can put that plank up on the window to make sure we have some kind of barricade because if we don't have a barricade in front of that window and we sleep here we're pretty dead yeah fail to produce so this is not a good house for us to crash out in right now now remember anytime you do anything with your hammer switch back to your metal pipe put your book in your backpack so you reduce the weight you're carrying around needle screwdriver pen put all that stuff in the backpack dirty bandage let's go clean it at the sink there we go we got some fresh food. Let's loot both of them. And ice cream. Nah, let's leave it. Hit that map. Where are we at? There we are. We got some, not some, not some heart going on, but we got some food up in here. Let's go over here. We just don't trust that house in general. What's this? Oh, oh. Oh, that's a couple fellas. Oh, this is a barricaded house. That's usually a good sign. If you see a barricaded house as a new player, stay away from it until you can defend yourself really well or you have a good weapon or something like that. Because you'll probably get stomped by one of those... They're called survivor houses, I think. Or hoarder houses or something like that. But they have a lot of weaponry and good tools inside. If you find one of those, it's like the end-all be-all for like things to do. See, we haven't slept yet, but they're also filled with zombies. Switch to our nightstick. Smash, smash, smash. We can barely kill anybody because we're weak. We're. I'm telling you, you're so tired this early in the game that I do like 1% damage. So it's almost worth taking a nap over in this house. Forget you. I'll just go through the door. We're going to have to... Can we pick up... This chair? Actually, you know what? We need it there anyway. Can we pick up... Nah, we don't have anything in here we can protect ourselves with. You know what you can do? When in doubt... Grab a chair like this when you know you're in trouble. Walk into a bathroom, barricade yourself in here, place the chair down, right click, sleep. Let's get some nappage in. Get rid of that exhaustion. If you don't get rid of that exhaustion, I would sleep until 540, something like that. If you don't get rid of that exhaustion, you're dead. That's the that's the thing that kills everybody, is exhaustion. Your damage goes down, I think it goes down 95%, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just not something you want to be dealing with. So now let's go try to tackle that survivor house and get ourselves a bunch of tools. And that'll be a good stopping point for this tips video. Fighting in the dark, never a good call. That being said, looks like they broke their way out of here. Let's go take a peek. Oh, no, you didn't yet. I'm not going to help you. I'll open the window if I can, though. My goodness, I'm weak. Don't do what I just did, folks. I just happened to know there was only one there because of the timing of them banging on the window or on the door. 
Don't open the door to bad people. They barricaded in here. There should be a bunch of survival stuff in here. A couple flashlights, that sort of thing. There should be a lot more than that, though. Cooking, farming. Lane's auto manual. You want to read these to be able to do mechanics on different types of vehicles. And then throw them on the ground. Oh, I forgot to throw down this metal pipe. That was a mistake. There we go. Got rid of the auto manual. Got rid of the extra weight of a pipe. We're in pain. We don't care. Nothing low enough level for us to take. Let's fill our water bottle. And then drink away our thirst. This is not a big survivor house. They normally are when they're barricaded up like that. I wonder what that... I wonder why that is. Hmm. Let's eat some lettuce. Get our hunger out of the way. Butter's great calories. Makes you unhappy, but you don't care. If you ever take underweight, just gobble up that butter. Move broken glass. Nah. Let's go check. Hmm. That's interesting. That's the first time I've seen a survivor home that didn't have a bunch of tools and stuff in it. Okay, I'll let you break out of that house on your own. Because you're making noise right next to a horde. Which a lot of times... Oh boy, here he comes. Digital watch. Hmm. Let's take a peek. Looks like a single room. I don't like those single rooms because it's harder to sleep safely without a door between you and the zombies. Come on, buddy. Short blunt level up. Alright. We're fighting a lot less than I'm used to, so that's surprising. What is that noise? Oh, you're in the house. There we go. Come on out. I hear you. I heard you. I know you're out there. I'm not gonna stand here then. Oh, dramatic music. Okay. Now remember, this guy might break through at any time, so you just position so you can see both. I hear more coming. Yep. Oh, and even more. Try to hit him over the fence first. There we go. That'll slow one down so they're not coming over at the same time. Run. He's going to lunge. There we go. Yeah, now you stay on the ground, you little punk. Now remember, the, the dangerous thing about see that zombie in the window is that you can only hear one zombie. I mean, you can hear multiple zombies at a time. But if you're hearing one zombie here, it can get you distracted in terms of the zombies coming from behind your back. I like to get behind them because I think it does more damage when you hit them with a melee. In fact, I know it does. I just don't know the exact number of how much. Alright. Let's remove the broken glass here. Since that only hurts us and not the zombies. Let's go straight in. Hmm. What's this over here? What do you say you have? Just a pen? Really? Okay. Mechanics Volume 1. That's a good one. Let's grab that. Turn on our TV here. Remember, Power 1. Tune into Life and Living. Now we're good. That'd be hilarious if you could get the class teachings from... Oh, bandage. We'll take that. Extra bandage. Because we probably need to clean ours. Yep. Remove bandage. Alright, do that. Let's get into this kitchen. Clean our rag. Let's fill our water bottle. Let's drink to our heart's content. And more of the same. But this character, I would say, is in the process where they are well on their way to survival. They aren't getting queasy, so they're not dying. We're going to eat some of that ice cream. Eat a quarter of that ice cream. Get a good 400 calories in here. Spin around while we're eating. And then put that ice cream back in the freezer. Because this stuff melts faster than you can imagine. Put that cooked chicken in the fridge. Put the fresh carrots in the fridge. Lemon in the fridge. Make sure nothing else is going bad in our backpack. And I'm telling you, I won't carry around canned food if I can help it. So what we'll do is we'll go over here. We'll sit right here with the couch to our back. The open window to our back. That's what I would prefer. There we go. Now we can see both. Set ourselves to finish reading foraging. And then we'll read mechanics afterwards. And then we'll turn on the speed. And just listen. See, it's foggy outside. We don't want to go outside anyway. 
infinite zombies. Let's stop. Remove our bandage. Let's clean our bandage. Finish reading foraging. Then we'll finish with the mechanics and speed ourselves up. Keep an eye on our moodlets here. Because we really don't want to get murdered by zombies coming in. We don't want to die to moodlets that stack up and then all of a sudden, you know, something happens. There we go. We've got our class out of the way. Perfect. Got our class out of the way. We need to clean our bandage again. I saw that earlier, but, you know, infected, that's okay. That happens a lot when you're prone to illness and all that. So now that we've done that, we want to go clean all our bandages, fill our water bottle, drink more besides that, check if anything we forgot. Nope. Come back here. Turn around so we're facing both windows. Finish reading this mechanics. Wait, let's finish reading that Louisville map. And then toss it. Toss foraging. And then read the mechanics. Speed it up. We're going to have to eat at some point. Hungry. Could eat a horse right now. Okay. Remove our bandage. Put another bandage on there. Clean the rag. Eat the chicken that we made. Good amount of food. We can walk while we eat. Our guy's loving the chicken right now. And this is basically how you do the first couple days of Project Zomboid. This is pretty straightforward. Remember, the things we're missing right now are a pipe wrench, a wrench, and a saw. Beyond the pipe wrench, wrench, and saw, then you want an axe and a shovel to be able to chop trees. But that's kind of later on stuff. You don't have to worry too much about that. Now it's raining outside. Stay inside if you don't want to get soaking wet and sick. We just lightened our load in a big way. Let's remove this bandage while we're walking. Let's re-bandage it. Now, if you had alcohol or something like that, you could disinfect. And I highly recommend disinfecting. I spam disinfect. I don't know if it actually helps to spam it. But I do spam it. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to eat that. And I'm going to eat that. We're going to eat all the fresh, crappy stuff to knock it out of the park. But that's the primary thing you want to do. You want to establish yourself on the move. Do not barricade your first base down because you're going to lose. The zombies are going to find you. They're going to tear your walls down and they're going to kill you. It's as simple as that. And what I want to do is I want to show you guys a way that's replicatable. And I'm on apocalypse mode. If you're on survivor or builder mode, this is even easier. Now, this is a window that will break. So here's what I'm going to do. Oops. Pick up this TV. put it over here so if a zombie does break through we at least have a moment to get away I wonder if I can pick up this couch easily no carpentry level 2 dark wood table eh. we can uh, put ourselves right up against this TV and too much pain to sleep okay well we can't sleep I lied keep our H our health thing open so we can see when we need to change that. It's nighttime and it's raining. This is the last time you ever want to go outside. So let's promptly do it. Because when in Rome, do as the dumb Romans did and go outside and get rained on and die. Anything in here? Foraging Volume 1, we already read. Book, magazine, we're in pain. We need painkillers. How about your bathroom? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Out here, no painkillers here. No painkillers in your. Come on, who has no painkillers in their bedroom? I mean, uh. <clears throat> Let's go check out the next house. I think we've already been in this house. Oh no, I think we were up there. But let's check it out anyway. We see a zomboid across the street. There's a body in here. I don't necessarily trust it, so here's what I'll do. I'll crouch. Oh, nope. I'm moving. I hear something. There you are. Sneaky little bugger.
We can dismantle this as well if we want more electronics. I don't care. I'm not really playing this character for a long period of time. But one trick you can do is you can crouch. And for most people, it's Q. You can whisper. But if you're standing when you do it, you yell. And it's basically you screaming to attract zombies. I do that a lot of times if I'm walking into a house that I can't see well. I'll shout because then the zombies will come and start banging on the window trying to get me. And it tells me... Like, that's what I always tell the wife is like... In a zombie apocalypse, why would you not shout before you go into a house to immediately let yourself know if there's zombies inside? You always see in the movies where they're creeping around inside houses. I'm like, just make a loud noise, doofuses. Oh, can opener. You probably want to grab one of those and favorite it as well. What is that sound? Someone in there? Where is it? Now watch the door. See which one shakes. Ah, front door. Let's see what's out there. One zombie. Come on inside. Come on in, my friend. Let's turn on the TV. Turn it to Life and Living. Get it to Volume 1. Tune in. We're good to go. Cooking Volume 2. Do we have Cooking Volume 2 skills yet? Almost. Might as well stick around and read that metal working. Okay. Stale fish fillet. No thanks. Nice. Nice. Sleeping tablets. Let's drink. Fill our water bottle. And we're getting tired. So remember what I told you guys about being tired. Don't do it. Get a nap. Too much pain. Where's the painkillers? Sleeping pills. Let's take pills. Never ever take sleeping pills unless you know you're going to be safe. And there we go. We will sleep. Boop. Try to sleep till about 5.30 in the morning. Hopefully. There we go. Even better. Before we go outside, remove the bandage. We know it's infected. We don't care. Let's check out our house. Fresh tomato. Let's eat it. Stay on the go. Stay on the go. I'll take peas with me. That way I can eat them later. Packaged corn, I'll take that with me. We can eat it later. It's good little things to carry around because they're fresh and we can just gobble them up. Let's clean the bandage here. Let's drink. That's that. We don't need to wash off. We know we're just going to get dirty. Key. Okay. More shotgun shells. Another shotgun. Higher quality, no round in the chamber, racket, two rounds in it, I don't need it, I don't need the extra weight, I've already got my one, loaded up, same shotgun, yep, same thing, ammo straps and a choke tube, sling, wheel, that's their loss, let's go fight, we're bored. Remember, we're still looking for a saw and a couple wrenches, different types of wrenches. That was dangerous, what I just did, because if you ever crawl across a table like that and a zombie's in here, they'll be biting you three, four times before you ever get off. I think we've been in here. Yeah, we've been in here for sure. Yep. Hmm. Well, we'll do a little bit of an adventure mode before we finish this off, because this lesson's getting quite long. But I figured this would be somebody wanting to watch me play through a tutorial of Apocalypse Mode. If you play or watch through this tutorial a couple times, you'll start to catch on to what I'm trying to do and what I'm looking for. And I'm trying to put little tips in the corner for you to make it easy, because I know this game's very hard to get into as a new player. Avoid that, good lord. Alright, we've got one over here, at least two over here. Possibly three, possibly a horde. Nah, just three. Let's check this one out, yep. There we go, separate them. Yeah, 
Now the downside of the dark is it's harder to see around you. And see how they're coming at a weird angle? Back up until they're in the same line. That way it lets you kind of knock them back at the same time in the same direction. Because you would be surprised how often you can miss a zombie because you were aiming like a fraction of a centimeter away from where they were standing. And then they come and gobble you up. That's strange. Louisville map. Louisville map. I, I swear somebody just broke in this window and came out. But I don't see them now. Oh, there they are. That's nice. We can get a construction helmet. We can wear that. That's good. That'll protect our head from ever getting bitten. Do we have a hat on? No. So we're gonna put the okay. The trick with Louisville maps is since there's so many maps. Oh boy, a horde. Okay, let some of them get stuck. Fight the rest of them. Remember, I said in the dark this is dangerous because something could be sneaking up behind me and I wouldn't see it. Just remember, aim your mouse at their feet to be able to hit them. It's the best you can do, and give up as little ground as possible because you don't have a lot of ground. I'm backing up into a fence, right? So I don't have a lot of ground to give. So I need to fight. So you notice I'm doing more micro movements as I'm backing up, so I lose less ground. Always check around you. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch to a metal pipe here. Because I want my instant grab nightstick still available. What is that sound? I hear some snarling going on. Is it at this door or window? Oh, there you go. I hate that. When they come out, man, that lungy grab is one of the glitchiest things in the game, I think. You have to be really careful with it. Oh, boy. There's one still in here for sure. And I don't think we're going to find a saw in this house unless we find it over here by the garage or something. Yep, there it is. Alright, we're getting close to time for a class. It's almost 6 o'clock. Rosewood, we'll take that. Don't stand too close to the edge. This isn't a garage. Nice to meet you. Let's creep. So we're less obvious to everyone. Let's... Nope. Whenever you see one, there's likely two, and if you see two, there's probably a horde somewhere close. Now we're panicked, so we're swinging slower. And we're in pain, so we're swinging slower, so we gotta keep track of our moodlets. Keep track of those moodlets. Oh, there, there he is. That's why you peek. Now, we know someone's behind us, right? We know that because we heard them earlier. So let's circle around. There's another one to our right over here. He's about halfway to us right now. He's gonna be close. Alright. Yep. Step on the body so they don't get up. Aim at the head. Let's collect ourselves a little horde here. Look through while we've got a second. Antidepressants. That's nice. We've got so many antidepressants. Our dude's going to be happy as heck. Alright, let's see if we can get in this house easy. Nope. Oh, more. Okay. Hi, guys. Whack. Now, this is just personal preference, but I like killing them away from the other horde. So when I'm searching their bodies, I don't end up searching the same people's bodies over and over again. Oh, boy. Another horde. Come on, you silly horde. I'm too tired to fight this. See how I'm swinging a little slower than normal? Whenever you notice yourself swinging a little slower than normal, that's when it's high time to get the heck out. Because there's something going on that you don't know. Panic, pain, eh, a little bit, but there's something else going on that I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the rain does it, but there's something slowing my attack speed right now, and I can't figure out what it is. So when that happens, don't be a fool and fight anyway. Just get away. 
Or at least get it to where there's only like one at a time like that. Because if you have confidence in yourself, yeah, see that? You just don't want to... You just don't want to deal with the fact that you're swinging super slow all of a sudden. And you don't know why. Nah. See, there's something going on with my character right now that's not good. And I don't know what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a little trick with line of sight. Right? We're going to lose line of sight. Well, first of all, there's a horde here and a horde down here. So what we're going to do is try and get them all on the same side of us. Watch this. Ooh. This might be a car jump and go maneuver. Well, this isn't a line of sight trick so much as a hurdle my ass over a big fence and hope there's nothing on the other side trick. There we go. Now we've got a horde here, a horde here, a couple hordes here. So here's what you do. You don't panic like your character is because I can't do any damage with strong panic. Pain is slowing me down to the point that it feels weird. So I'm not fighting just because I don't trust my character right now. So we've already cleared this area and it's already filling up with hordes. So what we're going to do instead is we know there's zombies here, so I'm getting a little further away from the edge. Because I don't want to be there when they hop back over there. They are. Keep them all in the same direction. And sometimes you have to walk for really, really long distances to keep them all in the same direction from you, right? Sometimes that happens. Don't need to worry about you guys. Come on now. Come on now. Don't be rude. Just tag along. If we had beta blockers, I'd take them and I'd fight, but... There's something going on with my character right now that I don't understand that is affecting my attack speed. Normally, if I had been scratched on the hand or lacerated on the hand or something, I would assume it was that. But a neck injury should not be slowing my attack speed this much. So, I'm wondering what it is. Now, here's the thing with trees. Zombies can see you through trees pretty darn easily. Because even if they catch just a glance of you, they will restart their little timer before they stop following you. But what you can do is you can go this direction, and then zombies will start going that direction after you. And you just make sure that the direction that you're going when they last saw you was, say, this direction, so they start angling that way, and then you cut through the trees when it gets really thick back another direction, and your priority would be getting around a building or something solid that you could use to completely block their vision. Oh, we're in a bad area. This is Mobile Home Park. Even if the zombies weren't around, this is a not great area. How many are behind us? One, two, three, something like that. Okay. So now, if the other zombies keep following, they're going to lose line of sight of me from this building. So we'll peek in the building, and we know that other zombie's going to find us. See? There's their line of sight. So we're going to now break line of sight with hard objects, like these full mobile homes. I can fight you. You're by yourself. I'm happy to make noise on your face. Check if you got anything. Nothing good. Okay. Move away. Oh, that's a horde. Don't want that. I can take on one dude. Anybody in this house? Doesn't look like a good house. Oh, an axe. He, there you go. We found an axe. We found an axe. That's a good thing. That fills out one of our tools that we wanted. Oh, there's a survivor house. That one's going to be loaded with gear. So we're going to make our home somewhere around here to go start fighting into that house. Perhaps even with a shotgun. It might be worth it. Empty jar. Let's just fill up our clean our rag. Fill up our water bottle. Drink away the thirst. Battery adhesive tape is good for repairs. There's no bed in here yet because this is basically an unoccupied home. Alright, here's the trick with the Louisville maps. Put them in your backpack. Right click and read. Hit escape. Right click and read. Hit escape. And then you'll eventually read them all and they'll be out here. So you can just drop them. Because otherwise you get confused as to which ones you've looked at and all that. Where does this attach? The belt. Okay. We're going to eat some peas. 
while we're here, and then we're going to look at the Rosewood map. So we can drop it. There we go, Rosewood. Also, if you're a brand new player, take a look at these maps. I've done it so long that I already know community is blue, retail, communities like police department, retail and commercial, industrial. That's a great place for tools, residential, restaurants, all that, etc. Just kind of commit that to memory the best you can, but just keep looking at it until you do. Makes it easier. You'll eventually, it'll eventually catch on for you pretty quickly. But let's go check out this survivor home. This is a way that you will die as a new player, finding a survivor home and trying to fight your way into it. But let's first make sure it's kind of clear out here. There's one zombie up there, three over here. Let's go handle these three. And just by making the noise by handling these three, let's make sure there's no horde over here. Because just by handling these three, we might actually trigger the horde that's presumably inside of that survivor house. Yeah, see, something's going on with my attack speed. It's really slow for some reason. And you see how sometimes now my guy is randomly shoving instead of attacking? Whenever your character starts doing that, it's like panic or something similar. Ooh, another pair of military boots in case you got a hole in one of them. Military green camo shirt. Shorts. Alright. See, there's only two, so you can still see through it. Let's look inside. Yep, there's somebody in there. There's somebody back there. Let's go take a look. That was a bad move right there, standing by the edge. This is three, so I can't see inside. Let's see what's in there. One guy. Wow, that's not bad at all. Alright, let's check the front door and this window, because we can peek through. Let's unbarricade this door. There's another one in there. Ugh. Can't get through, hmm? Alright. We're gonna have to unbarricade this one again. And be careful, when you unbarricade, you'll get these heavy planks in your inventory. You definitely want to drop those. Where did they break out? Oh, the back window. Yeah, they can't get out of there. They haven't unbarricaded like I have. And remember, once you've unbarricaded, drop the planks, equip your weapon again, and then open the door that you want to get in. What? Okay. Now, one thing I would do once I break a window like that is I would circle around and make sure nobody heard me. Because we knew there were a couple zombies up here they didn't hear. We're still good to go. This is a little dangerous as a new player. But what you want to do when you have multiple zombies in multiple directions in a house, first of all, is don't go in the house. Second of all, make sure you're peeking. So you know what's coming and from where. Lumberjack, blah, blah, blah. Okay, military, baseball cap, plank. I'm sure they'll have plenty of food. They have a kitchen knife. Kitchen knives are good if you like spears. There's our shovel. Okay, we have a couple things in here. Kitchen knife is good. Fill a water bottle. Drink. You can always make these bases if they're still pretty well protected. Make them your base, which is what I'm going to do right now to kind of finish off this. Let's pick up this TV since it's way too close to the edge for us. Hit tab to put it... Yeah, right here. Turn it to life and living. Turn on. Volume 1. Tune in. There we go. Life and living. Now we know we'll get class at 12. Scrap electronics. These are barricaded. This is the nice part is everything's barricaded for you. You don't even need nails. The one thing that's not barricaded is the window here that I took out. So what we'll do is we'll grab all three... All three of these planks. We'll step back inside. And if we can find nails somewhere in there, we'll re-barricade this window and we'll hole up inside this house. If we can't find it, what we'll do is we'll... We've broken this window, so there's nothing we can do until we can barricade it. So we'll make sure we stay in a room like this if we ever sleep. Gun case. Yeah, there's a pistol, ammo, and a magazine in there. We got some beds. We got a key. That's good. Another dress-style digital watch. Good. We have a nice little spot to hole up in here. Um, let's put the planks just randomly in this thing here. Now, what you need to barricade is planks, a hammer, and nails. We don't have any nails. We can start tearing things down to find nails, 
but that makes a lot of noise and it's kind of difficult to do early game because your carpentry skill sucks and it's kind of hard to do. Now, did we get any nails from tearing them down? No, we didn't. So we're kind of out of luck on that one. We can't disassemble because we don't have a saw. All right. So I've shown you guys basically the basic tools list. I'll go over it one more time. Screwdriver for electronics, hammer for carpentry, pipe wrench for plumbing, a shovel to bury bodies, which we now have, a saw for carpentry and log sawing logs, a wrench for mechanics and somehow stuff, and an axe for cutting trees, which we have, a backpack for some kind of carrying capacity, fanny packs if you find them, good shoes or boots for stomping zombie heads and so you don't get bitten, leather gloves are another good one, but that's just clothing, that's a whole different ball of wax. Don't touch canned food early, just mark it on your map. Do not always fight unless it's really worth it for you. Don't be afraid to just walk away and lose track of people in the woods and then around a hard barrier. Windows are definitely your friend if you have a weapon equipped, as I showed here. That was the only way to get into this place, and we did it. And don't play with mods. Pay attention to your Moodles up here. These are the most important thing in the game to you, early game. And until you know what you're doing, start with a high strength and fitness, guys, because they modify literally everything you do. Let me know if you guys like this long-form style of video. Or if you'd prefer if I cut more out. And uh, I'll try to modify my videos a little more. It's a lot easier for me to put out content if I don't have to modify it. Because it takes a lot less time. But if you need it modified and edited, I'm happy to do so. Just let me know, guys. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.